Hey folks, this is JR with DIY Prepper. Welcome to the channel. If you've been a prepper for a while, then there's a good chance that you've amassed quite a bit of stuff. That could be emergency food storage, survival gear, medical supplies, and a whole lot more. And while having those things can help you be more prepared, it also makes you more of a target. Many of these things are high value items during normal times, and if things start to go downhill, people will only want them more. So today we're going to talk about ways that you can conceal your prep so that they'll kind of fly under the radar during normal times, but also be more difficult for people to find if they start to snoop around. And one of the best ways to conceal your preps is to prevent your home from becoming known as the neighborhood's prepper house. While we all know that we should be careful who we talk to about our preps, many times we're less aware of how the appearance of our homes or even our vehicles could give people clues. I, for example, I'm very careful to make my home look as inconspicuous as possible from the outside. The only preparedness-related thing that people can see from the road is my garden, and that's only because that's the only place where it can get the sunlight that it needs. But then you compare that with a neighbor that I have a few streets over who has over a dozen rainwater barrels in their front yard. While it's good that they have those, they're more prepared because of it, it also makes their house stick out like a sore thumb. So when it comes to preps like that, try to put them in an area of your property that's less visible, at least to people just passing by. Backyards with a privacy fence are a good place to put those kinds of preps, but even with that, keep in mind that your neighbors are probably still going to be aware that you have them. So if they start to ask questions, just try to play it off. Tell them things like you're trying to save money on your water bill or rainwater's better for your garden plants. Also, remember that privacy fences can give potential intruders a less visible location to breach windows and doors, so always keep them locked up. Then, most of us are going to have guests in our home at one time or another, and when they visit, you don't want your preps to be out in the open for everybody to see. Using long and skinny plastic totes will allow you to keep certain things under your bed, but don't forget about other spaces behind or beside other furniture. Long-term food storage can be hidden behind cereal boxes in your pantry, and things that aren't temperature sensitive can be kept in the attic. While those hiding places won't effectively conceal your preps if your home gets ransacked, at the very least they're going to help them stay out of sight and out of mind for your guests, or if anybody has to come service your home. Then, when it comes to vehicles, avoid doing things that would make them look out of the ordinary. A four-wheel drive truck or SUV in most cases should be fine, and you can even add accessories to them like camper shells or racks. You just want to avoid going totally overboard with them and making them look like something out of Mad Max. Like in the town where I live, there's this Jeep that has this, it looks like a homemade either rack or roll cage, I'm not even sure really what it is, but it sticks out like crazy, and I know if I'm noticing it, I can't be the only one. Also, be careful of the kinds of bumper stickers and decals that you put on your vehicle or the signs that you put in your yard, because you don't want to inadvertently advertise high-value items that you may have either in your vehicle or home. Then another way that you can conceal your preps is to use some sort of burial tube. This is one that Sportsman's Guide sent to me, and I'd like to thank him for doing that and for sponsoring today's video. One good thing about burial tubes is that you can use them a lot of different places. You could use them to hide things on your own home property, or you could also use them to set up a cache system between your home and your bug out location if you have one. And they also work really well if you have preps that maybe you don't want anybody else to know that you have. This particular one is made of heavy duty plastic, so you don't have to worry about it rusting through or the lid rusting into place. At around 46 inches long by 12 inches wide, it's large enough to hold a ton of supplies including food, water, electronics, survival gear, and even long guns. The lid has a rubber gasket on it to prevent moisture from getting in, and it kind of reminds me of the Gamma Seal lids that a lot of us use for our food storage. Then the lid itself is protected by a cover that slides over the top of the tube. This should repel any water that comes into contact with the top of the tube, preventing it from even touching the lid. Now, if you're going to get one of these, it's also a good idea to pick up some Mylar bags. While tubes like this are pretty water resistant, if you pack your supplies in Mylar bags, then that's going to give you an extra layer of protection in case moisture somehow finds its way inside. Using smaller bags would also work better with desiccant packets that may not be able to handle moisture from something as large as the tube. That'd be useful if you're trying to hide food, medications, ammo, or electronics. 
Then you can even find longer Mylar bags specifically made for protecting rifles and shotguns. Once sealed, Mylar should remain impervious to moisture unless the bags are damaged. Just be sure to lubricate tools or anything mechanical before storing them to protect them from rust. And when it comes to burying a tube like this, you can either bury it horizontally or vertically, and each one has its own advantages and disadvantages. If you bury it horizontally, it's going to be easier to put in the ground because you're not going to have to dig as big of a hole, and it's also going to be easier to pull back up out of the ground when you need to access it. But if you do that, then it's also going to be easier for somebody to find using a metal detector if you have anything metal inside. And you may also sacrifice a little bit of the top cap's effectiveness at channeling water away from the lid. If you bury it vertically, I definitely recommend getting a set of post hole diggers since you're going to need a really deep hole. Burying it vertically will help this top cap do its job and it'll also give it less surface area to be found using something like a metal detector. You could conceal it further by burying something like a can of pennies or a broken tool head a few inches above the tube because if somebody's using a metal detector, they may feel like they've already found what's there and just move on. But since it's so large, if you bury this vertically, I would not recommend trying to remove the entire container from the ground. Instead, you could keep a grabber tool in there for small items and tie paracord handles to others so that you can lift them out. You could also keep a short length of rope with a hook tied to it at the top of this so that when you open it up, you could use that to fish out your other supplies. So if you have preps that you need to hide or want to start a cache system, then this is a very good option for that. If you think you may want to pick one of these up or anything else sports or outdoor related, then be sure to check out Sportsman's Guide. If you use the code PREPPER, then you can get $20 off your first $100. Then there's also places inside your home that you can hide smaller items, and for these, you want to think of places that intruders don't normally look for valuables. So right off the bat, your master bedroom is going to be out because that's where most people keep things like their jewelry and their firearms. And while many people suggest hiding things in your bathroom, that actually may not be the best idea. Many burglars will raid your medicine cabinet hoping to find different kinds of drugs. And many hiding spots like taping something underneath the lid of your toilet tank or underneath your sink are well known to people who do those kinds of crimes. Something like that would work much better under a kitchen sink where you'll have a similar amount of hidden space but it isn't normally used to hide those kinds of items. Kids' rooms can be a decent option as well, but you want to be careful of the kinds of things that you store in there. Weapons are obviously going to be a no-go for this, along with anything else that could injure somebody or cause a fire. But if you're using things like plastic totes to hold old clothes, then you could always put like a layer of bandages or food underneath the clothing inside of those containers. Preferably containers that you use for this would be non-transparent to help conceal what's inside. Just be sure to store any valuables away from things like video game consoles or other electronics because if a burglar does go into a kid's room, that's probably what they're going to be after. Another room that these probably won't mess with too much is your laundry room. You could hide small preps like backup comms behind your laundry detergent, and you could even bury things like survival kits at the bottom of a laundry basket underneath some towels. I feel pretty confident that if you take it a step further and use a baby Ruth bar as a marker and some old underwear that no one will want to come near that pile of laundry. Then diversion safes can work well for small items like precious metals or backup cash. You can buy ones that are made to look like common household items and keep them in your pantry, or you could just keep those small items in the bottom of a box of cereal. The biggest danger of using these, though, is that since they look like common household items, they could easily get thrown away. So be sure that you and anybody else that could potentially clean that pantry out knows that there's stuff inside of those and you don't want to throw them out. Then if you have kids, use a cereal box or other food container that they wouldn't touch in a million years. Do not use Cap'n Crunch or gummies or anything that they would potentially get into. My preference for a diversion safe, though, would be those that look like wall outlets. While you would need to make minor modifications to your home, they should blend in pretty well, and even if they're a little bit off, then you could always put them somewhere like behind a couch or in your garage behind some junk. You could also do the same thing with air vents by installing fake ones either in your wall or ceiling. 
when it comes to your garage, one thing I haven't heard many people talk about is old paint cans. Larger five gallon paint buckets can hold a ton of supplies, although I wouldn't use them to hold food or medications. If you do this though, I try to have the paint can with the valuables stored in it stored amongst other paint cans so that it'll blend in. Outside of your home, you could store some items in waterproof containers under raised garden beds or planter boxes, but don't do that with anything that's temperature sensitive. Then, if you have the money and the space, you can install a false wall in the back of a walk-in closet. Something like that would allow you to conceal larger items and would be pretty easy to hide behind some clothing. Similar to that, you could also set up fake PVC pipe or conduit along the walls of your garage or inside of your attic. Then you could also hide valuables inside the hollow spaces of your furniture. Most couches, for example, have a lot of dead space inside of them, but you'd probably need to modify them at least a little bit because the fabric that runs underneath them isn't really all that strong. But just remember that thieves are becoming more sophisticated and know about many of these hiding spots, especially things like wall outlet diversion safes, and it isn't uncommon at all if somebody breaks into your house for them to toss things like cushions and mattresses around trying to find valuables underneath. So because of this, you may want to consider leaving sacrificial items out in the open for thieves to find. This can include small amounts of cash and other valuables, and if things start to get really bad, you could also do the same thing with small amounts of your food storage. If somebody comes in and they think they found what they're looking for, they may just grab that and leave and not look a whole lot more. Another option for hiding your preps is to spread them out over multiple locations. Earlier, we talked about how you could use burial tubes to create caches, but there are other ways that you could do that. Storage units can be an option, but with those, you do need to keep a few things in mind. First, if you can't make your payment for your storage unit, you may lose everything inside. And then also, if things start to go bad, you might not be able to access that unit at all. Indoor storage facilities will likely be completely shut down, and those that are fenced in may be difficult to access as well, since their access pads and gates rely on electricity to operate. It may be a better option to store less used household items like Christmas decorations in one of these to clear up room at your house to store high value preps. If you're blessed enough to have a bug out location, then you may want to store some of your longer term supplies there. These could be things that you don't really use all that often, but you'd still want to have during a longer term disaster situation. But you do want to keep in mind that if you're leaving things at a place that you're really not at all that often, then there's a much greater chance that they'll be stolen. So for a lot of people, a better option would be to leave some supplies with a trusted family member. Preferably, this would be somebody that you'd be joining up with if things got really bad, and you'd also probably want them to be on the way to your alternate location if you have one, but if you don't have any family members that meet that criteria, then you could leave your supplies with another member of your survival group. But hiding your supplies is only one small part of keeping them safe. So if you want to learn about other ways that you can secure your home, then check out this video. Or if you want to see 10 types of items that preppers should be stockpiling, then click here. Once again, I'd like to thank Sportsman's Guide for sponsoring us today. Thank y'all for stopping by. Y'all have a good one.